as one of the most lucrative degrees in the world the master of business administration or mba enjoys a rock star status according to recent reports listing the best paying jobs mbas get some of the highest salaries next to doctors and surgeons and unlike doctors and surgeons you can choose to work in virtually any industry with the kind of skill sets and specializations offered by an mba provided you obtain it at a business school respected by the recruiters getting into a top international mba program is quite competitive an overwhelming number of international mba aspirants have queries related to the admissions process some of them have done a little bit of research in the areas of b schools entrance tests essays recommendations but not enough to provide a complete picture so hang on as we lay down a synopsis of how to get into the top international mba programs in the world our information is based on our several years of experience in this field we'll walk you through a list of generic steps a new candidate should consider before applying to mba programs as well as the most suitable timeline for every step this is not a perfect list but we are hoping many candidates would be able to use it as a starting point and customize it based on their current status and career objectives so stick with us till the end most mba programs start in the fall season that's around august september assuming you are planning on starting an mba in the coming year you'll have to submit your mba application one year earlier which means your application preparation should start several months before the admission deadlines let's break up the mba application timeline into manageable chunks first things first you should begin with what motivates you to pursue an mba degree this simple question could be the most difficult to answer there are some aspects that will help you address the why mba query look at your current situation and evaluate in objective terms what is good and what is missing is it money job satisfaction growth prospects unmanageable workload stress international prospects or something else are you looking to change or fast track your career are you flirting with the idea of starting your own business expand this list based on your personal situation now for each of these areas see if an international mba will make a considerable difference to your status also think about alternative options that will help you reach your goals think about the risks involved and how you would be able to tackle them find a good mentor it could be a relative a friend a colleague or a good mba admissions consultant who is aware of the process and can give you solid advice also consider reading some of these books to help you understand your career drivers and your motivation to get an international mba Ideally your post MBA goals finalization should occur by the first quarter of the application year. Get your motivation sorted out in time and you'll be well prepared to take on the more regimented aspect of the MBA application. Having decided your MBA goals, the next ever popular query related to MBA applications is which business school should I apply to? To get that answer, here's what you need to do. What kind of academic, professional and personal dimensions do you possess? What are the top schools out there? The idea is to familiarize yourself with the goal and the competition. Check the websites and typical class profiles. See if you can identify a pattern and commonalities with your profile. Establish a list of B schools from various levels of rankings that have entry barriers you can overcome. It can be tempting to jump in after you find similarities in profiles among the top schools. International MBA can be an expensive affair. Some of the top MBA programs in the US can slice your savings by upwards of $100,000. Many candidates jump in without giving the financial arrangements much thought. Don't just aim for Harvard, Stanford, Wharton without having the clarity on how you'll be able to pay for them. If you are ROI focused, research your schools with affordability and scholarships in mind. School research goes hand in hand with other application preparations. Wrap it up within 3 months after your MBA goals finalization between March and June and you'll have all the target information for application requirements. MBA Crystal Ball offers a popular tool called the MBA Mock Application Process or MBA Map which can help you build a strong application strategy, validate your career goals and choose the right MBA programs based on the strength of your profile. We'll add a link to it below. You'll need to submit an aptitude test score such as GMAT or GRE. as well as an english proficiency score like ielts or toefl how would you define a good test score as part of step 
The business school research should yield information about the average scores accepted by various MBA programs. By now, you will have a fairly good idea of the kind of GMAT or GRE score to aim for. The general rule of thumb, higher is better. But let's face it, all of us can't and more importantly don't need to reach 780 out of an absolute 800. But you will need some basic tools to get a decent score. You could try teaching yourself. Make sure you pick up the latest edition of the official books. Apart from the textbooks, there are several websites that will help you brush up on your verbal and quant concepts. Solve as many mock tests as possible to get a feel for the real deal. You could also turn towards coaching. It is comparatively more expensive, but it might help in adding structure and discipline to the process. Find out about the experiences of people who have attended these courses to decide if it's a good fit for you. You could also check out online coaching for GMAT or GRE. When should you start your GMAT preparation? This can really vary from candidate to candidate. While some might be able to crack it in a month's time, others might require a few months. Bottom line, start early. The score does set the tone for many reasons, as it is one of the most controllable factors in your hands. You can try your first GMAT attempt within February and April. If you don't get the score you were aiming for, you can try again between June and July. The standard preparation material for TOEFL and IELTS is available on their official websites. However, you might also get a waiver for these tests from some B schools if you can show that you've completed your education in an institution where the medium of instruction was English. If you don't get the waiver, go ahead and take the test. You'll be free to focus on the rest of your application if you get your TOEFL test over by the middle of the year. Regardless of the submission deadlines, it is a good idea to start working on the online application forms right after they've been officially released. In some cases, the forms are so detailed and cumbersome that the candidates run out of time and steam by the time they complete it. Keep this ready in tandem with your MBA essays so that you can hit the submit button well before the actual deadline date. That brings us to the elephant in the room, MBA essays. They're extremely important. Short of a face-to-face -face meeting, MBA essays can help admission committees gauge the applicant's personality and MBA readiness. On an average, you can expect to write 15 to 20 different essays. That's about five schools, into three to four essays per school. Unless you write really strong essays, you'll not be invited for the next stage, the MBA interview. So how do you write good MBA essays? Each business school that you apply to will have their own set of essay prompts, but you'll see overlaps across many schools as the essays tend to be around similar themes. The first school that you work on would require the maximum effort, since you're working on getting the storyline in place that connects all the important dots. For subsequent schools, you may be able to pick the content and ideas from the first school and customize them. It is best to start planning your essay content early with enough time to make edits and improvements. Keep aside two to three months for it and get cracking by August. There are two components to dealing with the letter of recommendation. How should you choose your recommenders? Usually schools ask for two letters of recommendation or LOR from people who know your capabilities and can vouch for you. It could be a manager that you worked with recently or some other professional colleague. People generally assume the higher the designation of the recommender, the better. That's not true. If the MD of your company writes a superficial LOR, it can actually put you at a disadvantage. What should you ask them to write? Again, there are two approaches to this. One, try to cover aspects that are not already covered in the rest of your application. Or the second option is to reaffirm some qualities that you've talked about in your essays, like commitment, vision, innovativeness, and leadership. If you target the fall months of August to September towards arranging your referees and recommendations, you should be all set to complete your online application in time. If you manage to successfully meander through the maze that is the MBA application process, you may be called for the final stage, an interview. What will they ask you in an MBA interview? Some schools, especially the bigger, older ones with a huge MBA alumni network, ask their alums to interview shortlisted candidates. Others, for the sake of maintaining consistency, insist that someone from the admissions committee be involved in the process. How can you prepare for an MBA interview? Study your application content thoroughly. Think about what you've written in your essays, in your resume. Are there any leading questions that you can predict? Work on those responses so you're not taken by surprise. Ask someone else to review your application and ask you questions. Sometimes it can get technical. There may be case studies, general knowledge topics, and even puzzles. A full-fledged mock interview would help you do a dry run beforehand rather than experiment in front of the adcom. We have a detailed video on the channel on how to prepare for MBA interview. 
Our stand on the timeline could be a bit counterintuitive. We do not recommend you start preparing for interviews as soon as you have submitted the application. After completing the online submission, it's only fair to take some time off. In most cases, it's okay even if you start preparing after getting an interview invite. This avoids the frustration of wasted efforts and also ensures freshness of responses. Do not overdo it. If you've done your homework well while writing the MBA essays, a week or two is usually good enough for the interview preparation. Congratulations, you have an offer. Now what? You still have to think about finances, form I-20, student visa, travel formalities. But with the big challenge of securing a good seat, you can now focus on the logistics. MBA financing can be a tricky topic considering it can put a damper on the admission offer celebrations. However, MBA financing needs to be one of the earliest considerations in the timeline. Like we said before, plan your budget right about the time when you are investigating your MBA goals and researching the B schools to apply to. That way you'll be well prepared to handle the financing issues in the slim time between the MBA admission offer and the next step, getting your student visa and heading out for your starting term. What kind of financing options can you explore? Make sure you've done your research into MBA loans. And if you've chosen your B schools well, apart from the admit, you're also likely to get a scholarship or fellowship. All that is fine as long as the application culminates into an offer. What if you don't have an admission offer? Rejections are a big part of the MBA application reality. If you face rejection, go back into a self-analysis process. Some B schools may offer feedback in terms of what they felt was lacking in your application. Was it your GMAT score? your work experience, the absence of international exposure, or your ACADs. Take the feedback seriously. See how much of it can be addressed before taking a second shot. Also think if you really need to alter your school shortlist. If round one has not been successful, there's always round two. You can also ask yourself whether it would be wise to invest in an MBA consultant. The MBA application process can be pretty daunting, along with MBA essay editing services. Admission consultants offer other resources to sort out things based on their experiences but they can be expensive when compared to doing it all by yourself. How should you decide whether to hire one? Are you confident about the requirements of the B schools you're applying to? Then you may consider going solo. Do you want external perspectives and experts who have seen many profiles and applications similar to yours? In that case, hiring a competent consultant can make that small yet crucial difference between a good application and a successful application. In the end, it's a personal call. Do your research really well before signing up. Find out about their MBA consultants' profiles, specifically their educational and professional backgrounds. You're going to engage the consultant for one of the most important decisions in your life. Hope this video provides you useful insight into how to kickstart your MBA application process. Send us an email if you'd like professional help. Good luck to you.